Hey everybody, Johnny here with Team Legit. Today I'm going to be showing you my Skywalker. This is the Skywalker 2013 model. Um, they say 2013 model, but this is the latest one. It has a carbon fiber boom. I have it sprawled out here on my uh, desktop, so let me go ahead and show you what it looks like. So I've got the uh, Skywalker wings. I was actually uh, working on the wings. I finished this one up. Um, one thing I did different is I didn't use their included uh, extensions. I just thought it was going to be too long and cumbersome. So I just used some 20 inch extensions. Uh, one thing that I did here, I want to show you guys. I went ahead and glued the extensions all the way in. So when I flip this hatch over and then I glue this down for my main spar, there's no wires or anything that could get tangled or whatnot. Um, another thing that I do here is, let me see if I could do this one handed. Whenever I use an extension, I always put it into a knot. That way, the tighter or the harder you pull, the tighter the knot gets. This kind of helps ensure that your servos don't come loose uh, in flight, and especially if you're building a long-range aircraft like this one is going to be. Then you don't want to make you don't want those to get loose. Uh, so what I did here is I channeled out a little groove right there for the knot, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and run this wire okay, so in here. Real quick before I glue in these uh, channels for the main spar, one, I, one thing I like to do is uh, roughen up these edges. They have these little dimples on them, but uh, to me that's not enough. This is some really good quality EPO, so it's really nice and sleek. So what I'll do here is I'll take my blade, see if I can zoom in on that. So what I'll do here is I'll go ahead and just take my blade and just scratch it up a little bit and uh, I'm not pushing on it too deep I'm just kinda giving it some nice scratches and I'm actually using the blade in an, in an angle or like kinda sideways I'm not going with the, uh, the actual blade I'm just kinda putting it on the side here I'm basically what I'm doing is I'm scratching it up I'm roughing it up you could use sandpaper or you know uh, anything else but you wanna make sure that you get this edge nice and uh, um, roughed up so the glue makes a good contact to the actual uh, um, channel, the little uh, groove thing. So I'll go ahead and do the same thing here and I'm going to go ahead and use the supplied contact cement that they include in the uh, um, kit. I've noticed these are pretty good and they're really durable. But this thing right here, you want to make sure that's in there nice and tight because a lot of the load of your wing is going to be uh, on this actual uh, piece which is kind of funny, it's actually underneath but if that spar, if this comes loose, that spar is coming out and your wing's going to fold. And I've actually had that happen uh, on some other models that I bought um, in the past. So let's go ahead and get this glued up. Let me get the wings finished up and we'll go ahead and start on the fuse. All right, another quick tip here I have here, my servo. I went ahead and already glued my servo into the, um, into the spot that it goes into. Um, one thing I like to do is before I actually cut out my control surfaces, I'll go ahead and get my control rods and my linkage is all straightened up. So now that I have my servo glued in with my um, arm uh, centered with my servo tester, um, I went ahead and connected the uh, clevis and the control rod. So all I have to do now is just tighten down this little um, screw and then I can go ahead and cut out my control surface so this way I don't have to worry about making sure that it's center or not. Uh, in this way it's exactly where it likes to be. So um, alright we'll be back to continue on the build. Hey everybody, I'm back here with the Skywalker build. I uh, wanted to show you guys a quick uh, couple things that I've done here. Um, if you look in here, I've got the current sensor for the Cyclops Storm. Uh, just mounted in the top compartment here. Also, I've got my plush 80 amp ESC in here with the little control board so I can make the adjustments on the Storm. Uh, back here, we've got our Sunny Sky 2820 motor. Uh, this is more like a 3542. Uh, a 3542 millimeter can. Uh, it's only a 920 kV motor, but I'm going to be running a 12 by 6 prop on this thing. Uh, underneath that, you'll see the GPS is uh, uh, glued down here. Um, it clears the prop just fine, and you get clear satellite lock, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, one thing I did on this aircraft, if you can see the uh, Spectrum receiver back here, this is for a customer. They're going to be flying it on Spectrum. I have the... Uh, Spectrum receiver back here glued down nice and uh, slick so it won't be uh, um, moving around or anything like that. And I've ran the wire through the carbon fiber tube so it's all nice and clean. I've got my digital metal geared servos here in the elevator section and the rudder. 
I did have to trim this part of the rudder, the very, very bottom part of the rudder, because uh, when I moved all the way over and I had the elevator pulled up, it was catching. So I just kind of give it a little trimming right here. So let's get inside the aircraft. Uh, actually, before I do that, I'm using the CXN uh, Pan and Tilt GoPro slash board camera holder. This is a really, really cool uh, um, GoPro mount, and I, I like to use this because when you pan around and you look at different things, your GoPro records the same thing that you look at. So if you want to get in here close, let me show you how this thing works. That beeping noise you guys keep hearing is my plane finder. If uh, the aircraft doesn't receive any input from the rudder of the aircraft uh, for more than a minute it starts to beep and in case I lose the plane it will just start beeping a special tone so this is a good thing to have on your aircraft so here's the pan and tilt I've got the GWS sail winch servo on this thing and as you can see it turns all the way around so I've got a full 360 degree view of uh, whatever I'm looking at on the aircraft so what I'll do is I'll just clean this wire up here and then also the camera board wire uh, will come down here as well so those will be nice and uh, snug in there they won't get tangled it's got a really nice tilt function and I can actually uh, turn it a little bit farther than 360 I just don't have the throw set yet on the uh, uh, radio so let's get inside um, one thing you'll notice, the screw on the hatch, I actually lengthened the screw a little bit because the little one that they had in there, I just couldn't get a good grip on it. But this is a really nice design. Uh, the way the canopy goes in, it locks onto the front little hatches right here. And then it goes down and then it locks in there. So this is not coming off. So it, it's a really nice uh, canopy pod that they thought of. It's not any magnets or Velcro It's going to fall off or, or fail in flight. Um, you'll see my two wires here. These are for my pan and tilt. Then I've got two additional wires right here. They're in a knot right now. This is going to be for my video system, my uh, camera, and my transmitter. And then let me pull this little plate forward a little bit. This is the Cyclops Storm OSD. I have it all nice and wired up in there. And uh, this is a really nice OSD. It's one of my favorite ones for making nice, clean builds. Um, I'll show you what it looks like uh, with the DVR shortly. Um, once I do the maiden flight for this aircraft. As you'll see, here's my uh, plane finder. This is the little thing that's tapped into the rudder channel. If I don't move the rudder stick for a while, it'll start beeping at me. And uh, if it goes down, it'll beep at me for a while, give me a, a special tone, uh, letting me know that the, the plane is lost. So I'm going to get everything tidied up. I'm going to get everything cleaned up. And uh, I'll go ahead and... Uh, made in this aircraft. I'm hoping tomorrow, you know, weather permitting, but uh, everything is done and uh, ready to go. Stay tuned. All right, I'm out here with the Skywalker 2013. I'm going to do a quick uh, maiden flight and uh, make sure the stabilizer and everything like that is uh, working correctly. Come on in here. Let me show you what I got inside the canopy. Right now, I'm using the Amway 1000 milliwatt 5.8 gigahertz transmitter. I've got my GoPro pan and tilt system set up here on the uh, top and uh, it pans and tilts with the uh, PZO420. So one cool thing I like about this uh, new Skywalker, it's got this locking hatch. So inside I've got two 4000 milliamp 4S LiPos, but I'm only running it off one. I just wanted to have both of them in there to make sure uh, it can carry the payload and uh, make sure the CG was good with where I want to set it up. So let's get this canopy secured. I've already checked that I've got a home lock. So we're going to go ahead and take off. Alright, let's turn our throttle lock off and go ahead and take off.
can't believe how well it's carrying that 8,000 milliamp four cell. Get it trimmed out. Very little stick and put to move this huge aircraft. I can't believe how stable it is. All right, let's go ahead and kick on pilot assist and see how it locks in. Oh, wow, look at that. It is locked in. Look how stable that thing is. I've got no throttle on the sticks and it is just gliding. Look at that. Wow. That is amazing. All right, now I've got about a quarter throttle. I'm going to see if I can come in for a lower pass so we can get some nice shots of how stable. Again, throttle's off. I have to put it into a dive because this thing just wants to glide. RTH is now on. I can't see it. There it is. RTH is doing a great job. I see it making a nice wide turn. All right, let's go ahead and bring it in for a landing here. I'm going to let it circle around uh, overhead real quick. Right now, it's doing its best to climb to the set 800 feet that I have on the RTH on the Cyclops Storm. So it's going to do its best to climb to 800 feet. What it'll do right now is come back around, and uh, once it hits the home location, it'll just make some wide circles. It'll use whatever power that I have applied, which is about half the throttle right now, to climb up. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw the goggles on for a second while it's in RTH, and just make sure that the aft draw and everything else looks good. So it looks like I'm about a little bit over half throttle, and I'm drawing about eight amps currently. RTH is doing real nice holding that uh, aircraft nice and stable. So, looks like I'm climbing up a little at a time. I'm about 500 feet right now. So, we've got a pretty nice solid aircraft. Uh, I'm going to go, where is it at? I see it. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and bring it in for a landing. And then, uh, we'll go ahead and uh, see how it's doing. Are you recording? Yep. All right, coming in for a landing. Look how stable that is. Almost no stick inputs. Nice uh, soft landing. Doesn't slide very well. Uh, that noise you hear beeping in there is the um, lost plane finder. So that thing will beep for quite a while. So overall, it's a pretty good setup. I'm gonna go ahead and get this packaged up and shipped out to the customer that ordered it. I'm Johnny. Thanks for watching.